So chapter 2, section 5 is on using linear models. So we're going to take um, what we've learned about lines and apply them to real-world situations. So our objectives are how are linear models applicable, applicable to real-life situations. We're going to use our understanding of equations to write lines based on data given and then demonstrate the ability to make predictions based on those models. So let's start with our vocab. A scatter plot is a graph that relates two sets of data by plotting data as ordered pairs. Um, I am pretty sure that you have probably done these before. Um, when you make a scatter plot, you then determine the strength of a relationship or the correlation between data sets. So sometimes there's a really strong correlation, like all of the data points fit on a line. Sometimes there's a weak correlation or sometimes there's no correlation. It's just all very random. And then the line that you draw through that data is called your line of best fit. And then your correlation coefficient, we label it with R, indicates the strength of the correlation. So the closer it is to 1, um, the better the correlation. The further from 1, the worse the correlation. So, um, utilities. I'm going to give you a table of data here. Um, it shows that the average monthly temperatures and electricity costs for a Texas home in 2008. So the table um, has the values rounded to the nearest whole number. And so we're going to make a scatter plot and then, descri and then describe that correlation. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and um, just get a blank screen for us so that we can plot our data. Um, so... We have our independent variables and our dependent variables here. So our independent would be our month. So I'm going to start 1 is, we're just going to say it's January, 2 February, 3 March, 4 April, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so there's our months there. And then the cost, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do this and say we're going to skip some numbers. I'm going to start at $100 because the cheapest month was $110. And then the most expensive was $255, it looks like. So I'm just going to go ahead and go buy like 20s. 120, so that'd be 110. 140, 160, 180, 200, 220. 240. Ah, where'd it go? Stop, stop, stop. Nope. Sorry, I keep hitting a button, guys. 260. Okay, so now we're just going to take and plot the data. Um, so in January... Oh, okay. Well, let me try this again, because our month is not our independent variable. My apologies, very much so. This should be our temperature at the bottom. Okay, um, so let's see. We go from, let's see, 50, 58 as our low. So I'm going to skip some and start with 50. And then it looks like... 85 is our high, so maybe do by 5s, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90. And then I will erase this part. Teachers make mistakes too. You know, it doesn't happen often, so just bask in the moment. All right, so in January, our temperature was 60 degrees, 61 degrees. And our bill, so there's 61 right there, and our bill was $150. So we're just going to kind of do that whole cross things. Okay, so there's that point. February was 58 degrees, and it was $139. So that goes about right. Having technical difficulties. Right there, um, 67 degrees. And $172, right about there. Um, 75 degrees and $205. 60 
79 degrees and $170. Eighty three degrees and two hundred and thirty four dollars, eighty four degrees and two hundred and fifty five dollars, eighty five degrees and two hundred and forty five dollars, eighty one degrees, two hundred and ten dollars. 76 and 183 and 65 and 132 and the last one is 58 and 110 so when we look at this data is it all kind of in the same general area could we draw a line through it um, and say, hey, I see a trend here. What if I just kind of went like this? Do we see a trend? As the temperature increases, our electricity bill increases. Why might that be? Well, we need lights um, in the winter, but we don't really need an air conditioner. In the summer, we run the air conditioner. So we could say that there's a strong positive correlation. And the reason why we say it's strong is because the data kind of all fits along this line. We we'll say it's positive because this line has a positive slope. All right. There's that again. I already made the scatter plot. We described the correlation. We notice that it's a strong positive. Okay, why don't you go ahead and try this one? With this one, we have a pretty strong negative correlation. You can tell that the less time you spend on the internet the day before you take a test. Um, in general, the better the students did. Why do you think that might be? Because they were taking the time to study, obviously. So, writing a trend line. So, we have a table that shows the home, the price of homes in Florida. So, here you go. Um, over time. So, we need to write an equation that models this. We're going to predict how much a home will cost in 2020 if this um, general rule stays the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a scatter plot. Um, we're going to start by letting x equal 0 be our first data, our 1940. And then we're going to sketch a trend line. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, why don't you go ahead and pause it, see what you do, and then I'll put, throw one up here really quick. So here you can see I have plotted um, all the points on the scatter plot. Now what you want to do is take a straight edge um, and draw a line of best fit. So you want to draw a line that looks like it kind of fits the data as best as possible. So you see I went through um, a few of those points. So we're going to take those points and then from that um, make an estimate of what our slope should be. So we're going to choose two of those points that we went through. I went through 10, 40,000 and 55, 110,000. So we're going to take and make the slope. So remember our equation for slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 110,000 minus 40,000 over 55 minus 10. Go ahead and simplify that. So you get 70 over 45. And when you take and divide that, you get 1.5 repeating, so about 1.6. And then it crossed at about um, 24,440. So we're going to use this equation, um, and we're going to go ahead and estimate the price of the home in 2020. So if 1940 was our first year, we need to take um, and predict what number that is, because we're not going to just plug in 2020. 
into that equation, we're going to take the number of years from that point. So it's actually 80 years after. So take and plug that in. And you get that the price of the home in 2020 should be about $149,000. All right, um, you can also use your calculator to find trend lines for you. So if we're given this data, um, to find an equation of best fit, you're going to use your graphing calculator. You go to the stat feature, and you're going to enter the data using your calculator. So you're going to um, put into Y1 these, and this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, don't do the years, um, and then this is going to be your Y2. So go ahead and plug in that data. And then what we're going to do is use your lin reg feature. So go back in there, do uh, your linear regression, and it should give you this equation. And we want to find out um, how well it fits this data and you find your correlation to coefficient is about 0.92 so I said the closer it is to 1 the more accurate it is so this is a very accurate very accurate um, estimation so then how much are you going to pay for a gallon of whole milk in 2020 again as 23 years later plug it in simplify you pay about four dollars and sixty cents if this trend continues Okay, so go ahead and make a scatter plot of this below and describe the correlation. Is it um, a strong positive, strong negative, weak, or is there no correlation at all? Check that with your partner. Your homework is lesson five, and have a good night.